very unique challenge for someone like me. Behind me, we've got the i40 sedan. It is a 1.7 litre turbo diesel. But to be asked to come in as a motoring journalist and do an economy drive is very different from what I normally do. I drive rally cars. Fortunately, I'm also very competitive and I've been set a challenge, which is to get from Sydney to Brisbane on a single tank. And we're not just using a base car with a manual, we've got an automatic with all the fruit in it. And to make it official, we've had the NRMA out and sealed the tank. We've officially taped it off, sealed it, even took a photo of it. And that now gets sent up to the RACQ in Queensland. So when we get up to Brisbane, they will then unseal it, fill the tank back up, see exactly how much we've used and say it's a legitimate process. Very much an extended road test for me, this one, because I'm gonna be spending pretty much two days. I can just cruise all the way up to Brisbane at a normal pace and see if we can get near these fuel figures that's claimed for it. Real world driving, that's what it's all about. Economical driving doesn't mean slow driving. If you plan ahead and think ahead, you'll be a safer driver, you'll be a better driver, and you'll be a more economical driver. And I can almost guarantee you'd get there at the same time as someone who's driving on and off the gas all the time, which is a nicer ride for you and it's better uh, economy-wise for the car and for the trip. About 250, 260 kilometres down, and I needed refueling before the car did. <laughs> Just finished lunch and currently averaging, according to the trip computer, 4.5 litres per hundred, which is quite impressive. If you're you know, basically driving with no economy in, in mind, you could expect to probably burn on the higher end of nine litres per 100 kilometres. We're currently doing 4.5. You think about the hit pocket, and you think about the actual uh, cost and ramifications of driving that way. If you're using half as much fuel, half of 70 litres, $1.50 a litre, you're gonna be saving around 55 to $60. You fill up once a fortnight, that's 26 times a year, do the math, and you're gonna be saving four figures. And it's simply by looking ahead, planning, how you're driving, and maybe if you're in a 110 zone, maybe doing a little bit less, doing 100 and, 102 to 105. And that's coming from someone who drives a rally car. <laughs> you know, I, even I can see the benefits of, of driving economically at the end of the day. We've made it to Coss Harbour, but there was a lot of roadworks, a lot of things happening on the roads, a lot of hills, a lot of trucks. A lot of things against doing an economy run, but we've made it here on time and our fuel figure is excellent. Well, morning of day two, it's eight degrees, so I'm gonna be using up a bit more fuel economy by having the heater on, I think. But it's a real world test, so we may as well see what we get. So I pulled out from the hotel and road work start. This is not your average economy run for sure, and it's not just because of the spec of the car being an automatic and a premium with luxuries. You know, I'm using the heater, I'm using the air conditioning, it's in school holidays. You know, there's, there's a few things that would work against actually getting some real economy run figures, yet we're still seeing the figures come through, which is great. I've taught myself to drive with a bit more economy in mind, and it just becomes second nature, it becomes so much easier to do. With a little bit of foresight and a bit of forethought and just a little bit of training yourself, anyone can drive like this. Anyone can drive with economy. And when you drive this way, it's actually the safest way to drive because you're thinking and looking ahead all the time. You're saving money so you can't lose. <laughs>